Welcome back, everybody, to the Marketing Rules Podcast, and it's my absolute pleasure to be joined by Chad Sawash. So, Chad, it is an absolute pleasure. I'm. Some people obviously will know you from from. There's one half of Chad and Cheese, but yeah, exactly. So, as anybody watching have, the video yes. will see will see the t shirt. Yeah. Um, uh, if you haven't got one, I'm sure Chad will send you one. <laughs> uh, but today we're I've, I've got Chad here on his own because uh, as kind of HR talent acquisition kind of expert. But Chad, for those who might not have listened to the Chad and Cheese podcast or even know a little bit about your kind of background, which is pretty interesting, maybe you could kind of just give us a quick kind of brief summary of of how you got to what you do today. Sure, sure. Yeah, definitely. You can go to LinkedIn and check check out the, the details, right? But I've been in this industry since before Monster was Monster. So I was in the recruitment tech industry back then. Uh, and since then, you know, I've been in leadership positions, uh, working mainly with major Fortune 500 companies, building tech, building process, compliance, those types of things. Uh, was the lead in building the National Labor Exchange in the United States of America. And uh, with Ronstad, a little company called Ronstad for a little little bit of time. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm ex Ronstad. <laughs> I am. I'm ex I used to work over there, guys, in, 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 in Demon, in, in, in Amsterdam. So I know those guys uh, pretty yeah, yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but Karen, sorry, I interrupted you on your flight. No, 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 you're good, you're good. And from that point, I, I launched out of, of Ronstad. I, I pretty much resuscitated my consulting arm. Uh, Joel and I, he he's an entrepreneur on the on the tech side, so he had a startup. So I thought a great branding experience for us to start a podcast. This is in 2016. I finally got his ass off the couch in 2017. March of 2017, and we are now well over 1,100 episodes, and people are listening. It's just it's 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 mind boggling, my friend. It, it really is. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it's not slightly off topic what we're going to discuss today, but um, I'm sure we'll kind of have you back at some point to talk around kind of podcasting and 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 how that and how that's just kind of rocketed for you because you know it is easily the you know I, I don't know the stats, but I'm sure they are phenomenal easily the the kind of up there in the you know top five top you know two or three hr kind of style ta podcasts out there mm. globally surely at the minute right it must be kind of yeah 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 no be, question yeah yeah uh and one day you're gonna have to tell me how you did it you know <laughs> someday someday <laughs> there must there's a, to let me in on that secret source that's what it is yeah, yeah. um but today th- we're going to talk around a little bit around kind of recruiters and using marketing skills and being marketeers and how that and, and if that's a thing if it's a yeah. good thing if it's a bad thing if it's something we want to encourage and this came about because i think i, I put something out online talking around kind of our, my experience with recruiters being kind of marketeers and we got kind of talking and said well let's let's come onto the podcast let's just have a chat around this let's kind of see it from both sides let's take all the kind of angles let's just kind of see if that is something that you know, let's play both sides and, and and discuss whether that is something that we should be encouraging our recruiters to do, whether it's not, whether what where that what the place of the recruiter is in the marketing process, all that kind of, all that kind of juicy stuff, right? But my my when I put up the video out there, it was it was in response to a few other things I kind of read online, that, and my general kind of premise was that I don't think that re- recruiters should be classed as marketeers. Mm-hmm. And my feeling was is that they should just be really good recruiters, okay? Yeah. And I feel that the re- the recruiters, you know, that's that's their specialism, and they do that really well. Well, they should be doing that really well. Yeah. And, and technically, you know, if the, if you go by the, the full time is a consul- recruitment consultant, so they have that con- they should be consultative as well, and that all should be part of it. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't a part of part for marketing to play in there, but I don't think they themselves should be marketeers. Right, that's where I kind of that's the, that's the bit that I kind of I wouldn't want to put that on any of the businesses that we would say. Look, you're recruiters now, you're marketeers as well, right? That's kind of where I was kind of coming from. Surely, yes. you you might have a different perspective on it. No, I I, I think it's the same but different, no question. Right. And I think it's 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 funny because whenever you say marketeer, I think musketeer, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, I see the little frilly, you know, I've got sabers tash and whatnot. I've got tash yeah, yeah. It, you know. Yes, little foils. Yeah. So yeah, let's take a look at this. I think, you know, we really have to boil down this discussion and why are we even having it? Right. Because why are, why, why are recruiters even 
trying to do marketing whatsoever. Yep. And I mean, just, just basic conversations, one thing, but actually being able to market mm -hmm. uh, and, and become a, a marketer is entirely different. It's a skill set, right? It's something that somebody actually does as a job for a living, right? So we're, we're saddling these poor recruiters with all of these different things that they need to know, they need to do, and so on and so forth. So this is more of a, a strategic discussion. Yeah. And I think the biggest issue that we have is, is, is budgetary in, in HR and in talent acquisition because most, well, pretty much most of the business and even some CHROs who I've spoke with see themselves as a cost center. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is really the base of, of how everything grows, guys. So, so give us a minute to get there. And we're not a cost center. We are the engine of every organization, period, because the organization doesn't exist without us. Why? Because if they don't have talent, they can't ideate the new product. If they, if they don't have talent, they can't design, they can't you know, discover, design, develop, engineer, any, or create any of the new product. They can't sell it, right? They can't service it, which means they can't open up the wallet even more get better retention and get more money from more wallet share. So at the end of the day, talent acquisition needs to understand their role in business. And we don't talk about business. That's mm -hmm. the biggest issue. So as soon as we start to understand that we are the biggest piece of the business, because it doesn't exist without us, we are the living beating heart, then we can start having, start have, uh, having discussions with marketing, with sales, which with all of the different departments and organization, in this case, it's marketing, to help them understand how we impact the brand. I've sat in front of hundreds of CMOs and brand leaders at the, the number one business must attend uh, event in the world it's called The Gathering, and it's, it happens in, in Banff, Canada. And you should see the eyeballs when we start talking to them about how many individuals are touched. We call it a bad touch mm -hmm. by the brand in going through a half an hour application process or going into a black hole or doing all of these different things, right? Mm -hmm. This is one aspect of marketing that we've kept away from marketing and marketing, to be quite frank, hasn't come exploring, looking for a problem. So when they understand this happens, they, they, they get incredibly interested, right? And they want to be able to understand how can our brand actually touch all of those individuals in a much nicer, better, our brand way. Because we're not doing that on, on the TA side of the house. Not to mention, as you start to go out to, to, to marketing and say, hey, look, we want to be able to ensure that you have the resources necessary to do your job, which means talent. We also want to be able to fill those positions faster with roles, with your, uh, your roles faster. Mm -hmm. We need budget to do that, right? And you can do that from department to department. But in this case, from a marketing standpoint, what CMO is going to say, no, no, we can, we can wait. We really don't need that position filled in, you know, six months, right? Well, it's not a vital position. That's great. Now you know that. Now you don't have to spend time on it. But at the end of the day, we need to start having better business discussions with the business. And in this case, it, in marketing so mm -hmm. that we get more budget because recruiters shouldn't be doing this shit. I completely, yeah, so I completely agree. And so it is one of those situations that, um, is it you feel that that department or that part of the business, okay, and and for any recruitment agencies listening, this is more of a round of a, of a, of a kind of a TA discussion, is is it just not valued enough within the within within the business, okay, or or it's the the talent acquisition part of the business just hasn't made the, their voice heard enough, which they're just not good enough at getting their voice heard, or it's not valued, or it's both, or it's yeah. something else, right? Well, this is where staffing companies have a great opportunity. Right, because they understand the business. Yep. Staffing, if anything, staffing and RPO, they understand the business, right? Because their entire business, the way they make money, the, may, the way they live and breathe is staffing, right? Is getting people in place. So th this makes a hell of a lot of sense to them. For TA professionals, once again, looking at themselves in the mirror and saying, well, I'm a cost center, they don't understand the business, right? 
that's the biggest problem. And, and luckily, me being an RPO for a few years, I really got down deep into understanding, I mean, in, into big organizations, big, major Fortune 10 companies mm -hmm. and how they're working, not just from a brand standpoint, but from a technology standpoint, from all the way through. The problem is talent acquisition doesn't do that. HR doesn't do that, right? Mm -hmm. And if we did, and if we did, then we could command more budget, not just from the head shed, not just from the, the, the CEO, but I'll give you a great example. Jeff Lackey, who was the you know VP of CVS for, for talent acquisition for multiple years, 90%, 90% of his budget came directly from those other departments. Why? Because they needed to get their positions filled. Well, Jeff came to him and said, hey, look, this is my budget. I can only do so much with this. If you want more, then I need X, right? 90% of his budget came from other departments, not from his, his, his quote unquote budget, his, mm -hmm. his traditional budget. So as soon as TA starts to understand that they wield a hell of a lot of power and they stiffen their spine and they actually go into a C-suite and say, oh, no, 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 wait, that's not going to work, right? This budget is not going to work. And let's go through department by departments, and then we'll start to have these discussions, either on the bigger budget and or budgets that's being allocated from other departments. So yes, this is a leadership. This is an understanding moment for talent acquisition far and wide. Because there's the old joke, right? That, that training, HR, and marketing are kind of like last in, first out, right? When, when, the, when the shit hits the fan, those, yeah. are the, those are the departments that kind of get hit. Because, and again, obviously as a marketeer, I'm going to argue that, you know, we're just as important. We're more and more important than other parts of the business. And obviously, you know, the, the talent acquisition, HR should also kind of be doing all the same. So it feels like yeah. there's a bit of a branding problem just for the, for, for talent acquisition kind of, you know, generally, right. That it is just kind of seen as, as CV shufflers, right. There's a lot mm -hmm. of that kind of going on. Yeah. So, you know, you know, how does, you know, the example you, you gave is great, but you know, no one, not everyone's going to have the the balls to kind of just get up and just say, look, I, you know, I need more of this. So it's like, they, they, they need, no. they need to find another job, James. That, <laughs> okay. That's all there is to it. I, I'm sorry. If you're a TA leader that's out there and you're afraid to walk in, stiffen your spine with a business case and demonstrating how you're actually impacting the bottom line on a daily basis, you are not the one for the job. I, I, I think you're probably a lovely person. I have no clue, but at the end of the day, you are not the person for the job. That's, that's the end and all answer, man. <laughs> Um, we, I mean, it, it's a, it's, and it's a great point. It is the fact that, uh, that, you know, to be taken seriously, you've probably got to kind of, there's, there's, you've got to, there's a certain amount of kind of ruthlessness you've got to kind of bring, bring to this potentially, right. Maybe a bit more business minded and just kind yeah. of, but I, I mean, I like the, 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 the state you put, you know, the idea you put that you just need to understand the business and the recruitment agencies. That's what that, that's what they're in the staffing agency. That's their job, right? They understand kind of, that's what they charge. That's why they can charge 20%. Yeah. That's why they can charge this because exactly. they understand the process and it is, and, and fun and weirdly enough, you know, people will pay for that. So it's valued as opposed to when doing it internally, you know, where it's, where it's, it's undervalued. Right. And so this is kind of, it's a very strange kind of like mindset that the businesses seem to have over this, that, that, but on the same set, in, in the same breath, they're then complain that they're spending too much on recruitment and staffing agencies. And that's why they've got their kind of internal kind of talent acquisition that's meant to be doing that part. So it, it feels like everybody needs to kind of, kind of up their game a bit really. And to kind mm -hmm. of really, and you know, from, you know, the employment agencies and the staffing agencies, all the way through to the talent, because everybody, you know, everybody's trying to kind of be pushing in the same direction and needs to have a bit more of a kind of a seat at the table, right? That sounds like where we're, we're kind of trying to aim for. Yeah. And I mean, th this isn't ruthless. This is literally just playing the game like everybody else is, right? right. Everybody else is trying to get their, their narrative, get their message heard, except mm -hmm. for talent acquisition and HR, right? There's a little hand that goes up and, and, they're, and they're, you know, kind of afraid to ask the big questions, to make the big statements. And again, I'm generalizing, but for the most part, in my 20 plus years in this industry, I've seen very strong people cower, go to the corner, get in the fetal position, put their thumb in the mouth. As soon as a CEO questions them on something, that is, that's where the discussion starts. When a CEO questions you 
on those things. That's where the discussion starts. That's you've got that peaked. You've got it hyped. Now go after it. And if you're not the leader who can go after it for your troops, and again, I'm 20 years in the military as well, Mm -hmm. then then you're not the leader for this mission, right? There's probably another mission out there for you, but not this one. And uh, one of those kind of uh, kind of points to be made, I guess, is kind of kind of, kind of rounding us back and circling back mm-hmm. to the kind of topic, is that these these kind of uh, uh, talent acquisition kind of teams, they're on the front line, right? They are almost the 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 arbiters and the advocates and the promoters of your brand, basically, right? Because oh, yeah. that would be they would be the first contact that some some people will have with your brand, okay. That's the first time they'll have talked to anybody from your com- from that company. Will be talking to a recruiter in a, in a business. They yeah. may have had a kind of access. They may have seen all the kind of your website and all the social and all that kind of thing. But the first person they probably talk to is a a recruiter. So, in kind of in, in kind of following on from our talk, are, should they be marketeers? Then no, I don't think they're marketeers, but they're definitely part of the brand. They're definitely part of that story. Yes. Right. So mm. I think there's 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 something where where recruiters need to understand their part within that that narrative right and i think they need to kind of be more aware of the fact that they are the kind of they are these these advocates for the for the brand and they 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 they, they, it's the first step on that journey that some people are going to have with that brand as well yeah they're they're brand ambassadors they are on the front line again that's more of a tactical uh conversation but yes that individual there are a couple of different things we need to focus on being able to take the administr the administrative via away from uh, recruiters so that they can focus on white glove experiences for these individuals, these candidates. And here's the biggest reason why: marketers focused on who's going to buy their product, right? That product is a transaction for the most part, right? There might be services where there's ongoing fees, but at the end of the day, it's a transaction. When we're talking about actually have an engagement with a candidate, this individual not only is looking at your brand and or product and could prospectively be a follow of your product, but they're looking to give more than just a transaction. They're looking for 40 hours a week, blood, sweat, and tears, overtime, commitment, right? Trust, loyalty. Those are the things that these individuals are looking for, right? And to be able to treat somebody who's just doing a transaction, better than the individual who actually wants to give you their blood, sweat, and tears. For me, again, that that's a non-starter. We have to think better and more about the experience that we're providing to individuals who really want to be a part of our, our tribe, our clan, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I, I always kind of describe it as it's not kind of personalization, it's individualization, right? You've got mm-hmm. to kind of treat people like kind of individuals. As but humans. that's increased but yeah well exactly yeah right but but that's increasingly difficult right especially with some businesses when they are absolutely you you must have seen this you must have kind of come when you are absolutely kind of flooded with kind of with applications and now your your argument there is well you've just got to do a better job of kind of filtering and writing things you don't so you know i had it described to me that you know recruitment is about getting people to opt out then opt in and all that kind of that, all that kind of thing right yeah there's all that yeah so that's but, another podcast yeah that's another podcast. yeah exactly right <laughs> But um, but it must be kind of like how do you how does a recruiter could just kind of you know bring that sense of brand and that brand loyalty and that brand ambassadorship when they just are in a position where they just aren't able to do that on a on an individual basis? Well, they can't, and that's what I'm saying. This is a strategic discussion. It's, this is not a this is not something that we saddle recruiters with, right? We should right. be trying to help recruiters scale. Right. And, and you as a human being, one human being, you don't scale well, it's just the way it is. So there's got to be processes and automation and RPA and those things that are actually put in yep. place that take the administrative away so that I can actually be a human being and I can interact and provide that white glove service to these, these, these great prospective candidates, applicants, or what have you. Yes, not everybody's going to be qualified, but You've got to remember, we have tech to be able to filter those individuals out and still treat them like humans. I don't know how many times I've heard uh, VPs uh, of talent acquisition call bad candidates. Well, that's just garbage. No, that's a human being that could be great for another position, right? Our mindsets are not where they should be. Right. 
Yeah. And it's a shame, right? Because there's a real opportunity for the, for the, for whether you're on the employment agency side, whether you're in the TA side yeah. to really kind of like shift, shift the, the things forward. You know, we do a lot of work in the, with, with employment agencies and recruitment agencies. And, you know, the joke is that they're a bit like the secondhand car salesmen. You know, there's a, there's, there's that kind of perception of them. When actually yes. these are really good, hardworking kind of recruiters who are trying yeah. to do the best by their clients. Yes. In sometimes really difficult situations with, which, you know, next to no budget, basically trying to kind of kind of find the right people, scraping through, you know, every, you know, as many people as they can on LinkedIn and all that kind right. of stuff, right? But I, I agree. I don't think that helps the perception of the business when it's kind of treated when when we when you know agencies are doing that and then TAs have to do exactly the same thing. I think there's there is there's a there's a mindset that needs to happen. Okay. Yeah. And it's not just on a on a, a, a you know a senior TA kind of director in a business. It's up to the the it, it's it's beyond that. It's it's slightly bigger than that. You know. I think there is there's a place for all the networks and all the associations, everybody to try and kind of push forward to make this make our industry just the perception of it more professional and just seen with better eyes in the eyes of candidates, clients alike, basically. Yeah. That's what I feel. So I think I think staffing has an amazing opportunity. I think they've 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 used this opportunity for years, but they can do better around this entire narrative of being able to provide a white glove service. Right. And it's not just saying it, but actually demonstrating what are you doing? What kind of automation are you putting in place? Who, you know, is, is Johnny and Julie and so on? Or who's on my account, right? To ensure that every single individual who is getting touched by your staff are actually feeling our brand. Right. So there, there's a great opportunity for staffing because they, for, for, from my standpoint, from my, my experience, they will adopt much faster than TA, right? Because again, TA doesn't have the budget because they're not going after it because they don't understand the business. Staffing understands the business. They can start to go after uh, some of these budgets, not to mention also empower and help their HR and TA clients go after more budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always, th I've always thought that there's, there's, there's also this perception that, you know, that, that talent acquisition and in-house in, in kind of recruiters uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure not to use recruitment agencies, but there's a, there's a happy medium, right? That can be to come, you know, even a happy medium. There's 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 a uh, there's a synergy between the two, right? And the, and there should and it should be which should be embraced, and it shouldn't be seen as a uh, situation. Oh, we, we you know we're wasting money on the recruitment agencies because it, they cost their X amount of money. They cost X amount for twenty percent on these permanent placements that they're making. They're just we, why we should be doing that, and it's, but it doesn't it shouldn't be seen like that. There's a there's a synergy between the, the, the these two types of business that doesn't work if you haven't got one piece of that if each piece of that puzzle basically that's how I see it. Well, yeah, but we we have me, we we have like half the puzzle for goodness sakes. If we knew, let's say for instance, and I'll give you a great example because it's an easy example. Mm -hmm. You go to your CRO. Your CRO knows exactly what an open position costs the bottom line every single day because they 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 have a quota. They split that quota up. They know what that they know what that uh, region or, or what that seat usually brings in, right? So if you understand what that is per day, you can extrapolate. Then you can take the things that we already know: time to hire, right? Time to fill those types of things. You can take those. You can take that 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 amount that the CRO helped you get to, and then you can demonstrate to the CRO this is what you're losing every single day. Now, if we actually had more tech or we could do this or we could do that. Here's the budget. Can you help us do that? Amy Butchko, who used to be the VP of talent uh, technology at SAIC, a company that has over 180,000 employees. That's exactly what she did. She went to the CRO, showed her the process, went through, they went through the formula and said, okay, now what can we do? to be able to blow this old ATS and process up and build from the ground up. Amy had a number, the COR, the CRO looked at her and said, is that all? Let's do this. Again, you have to have the hard discussions. You have to be, bring the other leaders of the organization into the conversation. So they understand the impact, either positive or negative you are having on the business and or bottom line. So in a strange kind of way, if we circle back, you know, that that whole kind of in-house TA department doesn't necessarily, they don't need to be marketeers. 
they need to understand the business better, right? And they need to have that kind of seat at the table. Uh, they need to be. They need to have other skills. Marketing isn't one of them, but the other skills is is kind of business analytics and 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 understand the financing, understand how the business is run, and just kind of business and kind of business management. That's the kind of there. Some of the the tools and skills that need to be at, at their disposal, not marketing. Basically, that's, I think yeah. that's where we've kind of got to, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, we need to be better business people. Yeah. In that, we will be able to 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 either pull assets like marketing into our world and or we could prospectively build a brand you know employer brand department under ta uh, that that is a liaison with marketing to, to make that happen but no matter we need more budget to be able to make that all of this happen yeah yeah so to, to, to round things off just give us more money that's what we need we need more money it, we need more, it, exactly it, it, yeah. yeah we just have to prove why and yeah, that's exactly. the biggest that's the biggest case Indeed. Uh, Chad, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on a podcast. We Thank could you. Come on, we could go on for hours. As always, we'll include all of your details in the show notes, although most people should know exactly who you are. Um, I don't even know if it's worth including a link to the podcast, because if anybody hasn't kind of listened to Chad and Cheese, then they're, they're not really in the HR what space anyway. What are you anyway. thinking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But for now, uh, Chad, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.